Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to video number two in the series of how to get started in turbine aircraft. This episode is going to be purely focused on the aircraft. So stay tuned and we'll discuss the proper plane or some of the options you should start with. Alright guys, let me preface the beginning of this video by telling you that all of my suggestions in this video are just purely my opinion. There is no benefit to any of my suggestions to me and there's a lot of amazing aircraft out there so everybody's going to have some different opinions on the right plane to start with but I just want to give you guys some input on what my opinion is the right airplane to start with. All right, now I want this video to have some sort of focus and format, but a lot of it's just gonna be my opinions and my scattered thoughts on the most common question I get, which is what aircraft should I start off with turbine jets in? So I'm gonna be inserting a whole bunch of pictures um, of various aircraft and again, there's lots of great options out there, but let's dive into this topic. So the very first thing I thought of when I thought of this topic, and this is something that I get asked all the time, what plane should I start with in turbine aircraft? The most important thing I think is if you have a budget, try and budget for two aircraft. I know it sounds crazy uh, for some people, even buying their very first turbine aircraft seems like a huge jump, and it is, but I'll tell you what's gonna happen is if you buy one aircraft, uh, you're going to have some repairs to do. You're gonna have to fix some things on it, and generally, depending on where you live, parts are really, really tough to get, or they just require time. So, you may break a landing gear pin, not have any in stock, nobody around you has any in stock and you're out of commission for one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, depending on where you live, that's a lot of downtime to not be flying your turbine aircraft. So my first suggestion to you guys, if you're thinking about getting started in turbines, is budget for two aircraft as soon as you can. I do know. Because uh, having that downtime is not fun. All right, so one of the common things that people will think of, bring up, suggest to others is go with an EDF aircraft as a stepping stone into turbine aircraft. Now it may sound like an affordable option, but you gotta think about the batteries that are required and also your flight time and how it relates to turbine aircraft. So if you think about one of the, uh, the Horizon Hobby uh, units, maybe they're five, six hundred dollars at least here in Canada, that's what they are. Uh, you know, you buy three batteries, let's say the battery's about hundred and fifty dollars each, so you're looking at about four hundred and fifty dollars, so you're up to about a thousand dollars. Right there, and, and you need a good charger, right there, uh, the batteries have increased the cost substantially. Now, that four hundred and fifty dollars in batteries could go towards your, your brand new turbine for your turbinator, as an example, okay? Um, and that pays for about a third of your turbine for your new aircraft. So I don't really suggest to people to use the EDFs as a stepping stone. The other thing that really is tricky with them is the instant throttle response. Now you could add some delay, that's definitely a possibility, but that instant throttle response, which, re which relates to a prop aircraft, does not translate well to a turbine aircraft. Now, I'm a 
dealer for Swiwin engines. They have some of the fastest acceleration times out there, uh, like under four seconds. I've got some of my customers' smaller turbines uh, that'll spool up in about 2.6 seconds comfortably. And uh, still, there's some delay there, unlike the EDF units where it's instant. So I don't really suggest the EDF route. If that's the way you wanna go, that's awesome, go that way, but not the best option in my opinion. All right, so right there you can see the fuselage of the Ultra Flash. Now let's talk about the Ultra Flash. Now that Ultra Flash is a plane that I hear many people say, I'm getting into turbines, I'm gonna buy an Ultra Flash, great first jet. Uh, I know there are some people that suggest that as your first jet. I would never buy an Ultra Flash as a first jet. It is insanely fast, or it can be insanely fast, um, if you overpower it. And it's not difficult to land once you've been flying for a long time, but it can be a handful to land, and the reason for that is getting used to flying the plane slow. And that's something that I see everybody struggle with. We're not gonna talk about, it, about that in this episode. We will talk about it in future episodes based on how to get started in turbine aircraft. So let's talk about size here for a minute. It is very, very true that the larger the aircraft is, the easier it is to fly. So when I get the opportunity to fly some smaller aircraft, uh, and then you compare it to something like the Huracan here, uh, my Diamond aircraft, uh, which are like three-ish meter long aircraft, so roughly about 10 feet long, 10 foot wingspan, just big aircraft. Um, they do fly a lot easier. Now, one of the things that I really promote or push to my students, people that I'm working with, is fly the aircraft don't fly the money. Now that's one of the disadvantages of going with a larger aircraft is purely the cost. You know, you wanna put something like the Huracan here together. Uh, in US dollars, you're probably looking in the range of about thirteen to $15,000, just roughly, right? Don't hold me to that, but um, it's a expensive aircraft. You can put together a twin boom aircraft, like a boomerang, or something similar for probably a third to maybe half the cost, depending on the size you wanna go with. So there are much more affordable options, but size does matter. The larger the aircraft, the easier it is to fly. At first, it can be very intimidating, but it is much easier to fly. All right, so next thing I wanna get into, guys, is some of my suggestions on some great first aircraft. But before we do that, I wanna give you guys a thank you, and thank you to all the shop build donations that you guys have sent. I really appreciate it. Uh, we are, if you haven't heard, we are crowdfunding for the build of the new shop. Uh, everybody that has donated ha is listed on this, uh, this rolling credits here so far. Um, but thank you guys for all the donations. Uh, we're just over $3,000 now, which is super cool. I really appreciate it. So thank you for all the donations. Uh, it really helps. All right, so one of the suggested aircraft that I recommend to everybody is a twin boom aircraft. I know it's very common for this to be the recommended aircraft and I follow the same suit. A lot of people think they're ugly, that's fine. They're tons of fun to fly. They've got a big wing air area, but uh, Boomerang makes a great lineup of beginner, well, and intermediate and advanced aircraft. You can do amazing things with that Boomerang twin boom aircraft. Now, I'm not sure if Excalibur is still in business, but there is the Excalibur XL. It's a big aircraft, but the booms aren't on it, the wings aren't on it, so it actually packs up pretty tiny if you take them all apart, and uh, you can put them in a car very easily or a small, smaller vehicle, and uh, transporting it is no problem at all. 
Now the reason I suggest the twin boom aircraft is they fly really well, they land really well, they're easy to fly, they're quite forgiving, and they're built quite well. And you can, you can generally get one either used or you can build one for a pretty affordable price. Now, remember I prefaced this with none of my suggestions benefit me at all. So they're just purely suggestions. Uh, there is this big movement now towards people going with the foam aircraft or the uh, HSD, HDS aircraft, uh, the high density foam aircraft. I haven't had a ton of experience with them. I've seen a few of them and they do look like really great units and the nice thing about them is they're quite affordable as well too. So I think those are some good options. Uh, I'm not sure about the fixing end of things, the accuracy. I've had some people fly the, uh, the Chinese knockoff uh, Avantis and um, they're, they're retrimming them every single flight. So that could be the servos, could be the foam, just the general accuracy. Not entirely sure, but that would be my, one of my concerns with the foam aircraft is just the accuracy, uh, the longevity of it. Uh, if you guys have had one for, you know, a, a few years, comment down below, list the number of flights on it. I'm really actually excited and interested to see how long you've had this, these foam aircraft for because I don't have a ton of experience with them, but it's also a great starter option. All right, so I would definitely try and shy away from scale aircraft for your first turbine aircraft. In my opinion, not a great idea. You're dealing with gear doors, you're dealing with something that probably has a higher wing loading on it. Now there are some first turbine aircraft that would work out well, like Carf makes a great Viper jet, which is a great first aircraft. Um, I have a Carf Tudor behind me. Uh, I've done lots of videos on the Tudor. Another good aircraft to, I mean, the, the scale aircraft is, it's a trainer, right? That's what it's for. So um, great aircraft to be, uh, to be learning on turbines and how to fly. Um, it's got a massive wing to it, so very, very low wing loading, but it comes down to that intimidating factor as well too. It can be a little bit more expensive, you know, somewhere in that $15,000 range to put that together. And if you're flying the money, you're gonna be stressed out. If you're able to just fly the plane, you're gonna be in a better mindset and it's gonna be easier to fly. I would try to avoid the scale aircraft. Uh, another great first aircraft, T1, uh, makes a bunch of different uh, sized T1 models. I can't remember the, the exact representation of them, but there's a bunch of different, like T1 Mini, the T1 Normal One, whatever it is. Uh, they're also great aircraft to begin with. Uh, they're kind of a nice combination sport jet sort of semi-scale type idea, but more of a sport aircraft. All right guys, the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this video is the build of your new aircraft. So whatever option you decide to go with for your first and hopefully your second jet, uh, you build well or have somebody build it for you, but I would definitely get somebody to check it over for you. There is a plethora of Great information out there on the internet. There's also some bad information, but uh, maybe I've perhaps built the aircraft you're buying and it's on my channel, uh, but you can do a lot of research on the different forums like RC Universe, as an example, uh, or any of the other forums that are maybe local to you. I also use RC Canada as well too. And maybe your aircraft's been built and there's a lot of great examples of what to do and what not to do on those forums. So make sure you build it well, make sure you have somebody check it over, try and build in redundancy, try to think about the problems before they're ever gonna happen and work those things out so you don't have a problem at the field. So that's gonna be everything for this video guys on how to get started in turbine aircraft, the airplane edition or the aircraft edition. 
Hopefully you guys got something out of this. It's a little bit difficult for me to say buy this plane because that plane is not the right one for everybody and there are so many great options out there. If you do have any specific questions or comments on anything we've covered in this video, please list it down below. You can also shoot me an email as well too and I will respond to you if you have any specific questions. Additionally guys, as I suggested in the first video, if you have any specific topics that you want covered in this series, please list them down below. I got a bunch of great suggestions from the first video which we covered the equipment that you're going to need for your first turbine aircraft. So there's a lot more to come in these series. I appreciate your guys' comments and feedback. And as always, thank you to you guys who have supported the shop build so far. Thank you guys for watching the channel and watching my videos. So don't forget to give the video a thumbs up guys. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. When you do hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Thank you guys and we will see you in the next video.